Hi, this is Ilya from NIR, and we're here in Beijing with Conflux and Dr. Yang to describe us how Conflux works. Uh, do you want to give a little bit intro about yourself, and then uh, you can describe the Conflux? Uh, okay, I'm the research director of Conflux, and I uh, got a PhD in cryptography and uh, theoretical computer science. So now I'm uh, handling the protocol design and uh, other research stuff of uh, a group. Okay. Sure. Uh, let me see why we use tag for the first uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, you're familiar with uh, blockchain, right? Yes. Yes. Which is, uh, let's say, Bitcoin protocol, the Nakamoto consensus, which is called the largest chain. So, <coughs> Uh, the weight point of uh, Bitcoin is the uh, TPS is very low. Mm -hmm. The reason is uh, the block is a uh, limited size, and uh, the time between blocks is uh, expected to be quite long, like 10 minutes, right? So, how do we uh, increase the throughput of the system? Can we just uh, increase the block size and uh, reduce the block time? Uh, in fact, we cannot do that directly. If we do that, the chain will fork uh, very frequently. Right? You know the data? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, like, so there's, there's two things, right? There's like ghosts, etc. that kind of right, try to yeah. work around this. But yes. uh, basically, because if you, uh, when you generate a block, you have to broadcast it mm -hmm. to the whole network. But if the block is larger, then it takes longer to broadcast the, the, the block. And if the expected time to generate a block is shorter, then more likely you generate another block when this one is being broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Is broadcasting. So at this point, you will have a fork. And if you have a very short block time and the uh, oil quite large block size, you will have many forks, right? But if if you have many forks, then the adversary can attack with much less uh, computing power. It doesn't have to have 51%. It, it just needs to get, uh, say, computing power is uh, greater than the gap between these two biggest uh, branches. Mm -hmm. Then he can make this one to be the main chain and then switch back arbitrarily. Yeah. Okay. So that's not safe. And uh, the ghost rule said uh, we don't choose the largest chain as the main, the consensus. Instead, we will choose the heaviest chain. Let's say this example. Okay, say we are at uh, this point, which one is the next block in the consensus? If we follow the longest chain rule, this one is the longest chain. But if we follow the ghost rule, here we have one, two, three, four, five blocks, here we have four, so we choose this uh, way to go. Mm -hmm. And then again, we choose uh, this way, because we have three here and one here. And then now we, we have a tie, and uh, that's, uh, we don't have a consensus yet for these two blocks. Okay. So with the ghost rule, we can first we have one more block. Now we have a main chain in the ghost rule, right? Mm -hmm. But the ghost rule solved the problem of how to get a consensus on a chain when we have very short block time. But you see, we have many blocks uh, off the ghost chain. Mm -hmm. These blocks are wasted. They have a transaction, but the transactions are not valid, not processed at all. But still, they, they also need to be broadcasted, and they will use the bandwidth, they will use the computing power, the miners will do POW, but eventually the efforts are just wasted. So our intuition is that uh, why don't we take these blocks uh, 
also in our consensus. Mm -hmm. So besides the main chain, we have many other blocks. We just make them in a good order. So we can have some of the transactions, maybe not all transactions in, in these blocks, but we can have some of them to uh, contribute to the throughput of the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, um, in most of the cases, when there is a no adversary, when we have two concurrent blocks, they may have some transactions that are duplicated, but the transactions is not conflicting each other. So if we take both the blocks in the consensus, we only need to just uh, ignore some duplicated transactions, and the others we can uh, process it uh, sequentially. And uh, in many cases, just the arbitrary order is fine. But uh, in, uh, uh, in the consensus, uh, we can have a unique uh, total order of all the blocks, and then we, if we can find the total order of all the blocks, then we can process the transactions one by one. And when we meet a transaction that is not valid or duplicated, we just ignore that one, and we continue with the that transaction. So that's the main intuition of why we can use the, the DAX structure and we can uh, utilize the throughput contributed in every fork of blocks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and the question about this. Uh, yeah, I mean the the question is pretty much how do you get the total order of right? Of right. The blocks. That's the main. <laughs> yeah. That's the main work. Okay. So to get the total order, first we use the ghost rule. Mm -hmm. We find the main chain, which we call we call it the pivot chain. Let's uh, mark it with a different color. The what chain? Sorry. Uh, a pivot chain. Pivot. Uh, mm -hmm. So on the pivot chain, we have a party order. This block is first, second, third, fourth, right? Okay. Then for every block, we allow them to have one parentage, which is reference uh, the block that uh, we think is the pivot block, the, uh, the block on the pivot chain. And uh, then we also have some uh, references. Okay, the reference is said, uh, I saw this block before generating this one, mm -hmm. so it happened earlier, but uh, I don't think this is the pivot block, mm -hmm. so it's uh, some, some block offset of the pivot chain. Okay, so for every pivot block, we now have a time, right? We have a partial order for the pivot block. And for other blocks, we see which one is the first the pivot block that references uh, this block? So, um, first, uh, we can partition the time into many, which we call epoch. Which epoch? In every epoch, we have one pivot block, okay? Mm -hmm. Like this. And the other blocks, if we uh, this block is the first uh, referenced uh, by the pivot block uh, in this epoch, then the, this block belongs to this, uh, this epoch. Okay, for example, this one is the first referenced uh, in this uh, pivot block, so it belongs to a much later epoch. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we have a reference here to make the line Okay. So, it doesn't matter uh, what height this block uh, claims to be. It matters when this one gets uh, referenced by a pivot block. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> okay. Then, 
Suppose we have a consensus uh, to this pivot bug here, yeah, right? Now the view of all past blocks, uh, which uh, which uh, the miner can see when before generating this bug, are all referenced by this one, direct or indirect. So from this pivot block, we have uh, uh, first set the partial order of all pivot blocks, and then epoch by each pivot block. And then other blocks, uh, each one can bound to an epoch uh, when it's first the reference there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, uh, uh, okay, then we can say if the pivot block is not reverted, it's still the pivot chain, it's the pivot block, then no other block uh, can be inserted into some order before this. Uh, uh, be Shall we write a total order here? Yeah, I think we need it. Mm -hmm. Let's call this is A, B, C, D, E, I, D. Okay. Now the total order is the first we have A. Mm -hmm. Then we have C, but B and D happened before C. So they are inserted and we break type by the block ID. Okay. By uh, block ID? Yeah, by, uh, by block ID arbitrarily or uh, any deterministic rule is fine. Yeah. So, yeah, so block, you mean block hash or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, S, and uh, in this epoch we have uh, E and G. Mm -hmm. Because here I just uh, ordered it. With alphabetical way. <laughs> okay. Fine. And uh, then we have uh, H. H, but the uh, I comes first. And uh, then we have uh, J comes before K, right? We will preserve the topological order as well. And then. What, what do you have, uh, like, a, can you have a loop here? No, if you. Unless somebody's malicious, right? Uh, unless you can find the collision of in a hash, otherwise you can never have a loop. Okay. Because if you have a loop, uh, let's say we have a loop here, mm -hmm. it means uh, when generating this block, you'll know the block. Yeah, so if somebody yeah. malicious, like I, I posted two blocks pretty much. Uh, but still, it's very difficult. You need to find the collision in. The hash function because uh, okay. you need to do. I mean, just just uh, uh, for a second. So I put I post two blocks. I mean, I, I can just do this, right? Like I post two two blocks that point at the same parent and point at each other. Uh, like I, I found I found two two solutions. Like I split my hash power, found two solutions, posted two blocks pointing at each other. Uh, not exactly, because the block ID will be the hash of the block, right? Yeah, of the block Which is including the solution of the pure double. Okay. But uh, the reference happened before pure double. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, makes sense. You need to have the... You, you need to really do very difficult work. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, now. Now let's say some uh, adversary. We want to make a block, uh, let's say, X. And we want to insert the block uh, somewhere before the order here, mm -hmm. before H. How can he do that? Uh, of course, he can say, my parent is this A block here, variable block. Then can I get uh, inserted somewhere here? Like uh, before C? Yeah. No, no because not a real yeah. because uh, the reference of C, F, H are already fixed. Mm -hmm. So, and the ambassador he can be referenced perhaps by another block M. But then he will belong to the epoch of M, mm -hmm. which happens definitely after the epoch of H. So it can only be inserted somewhere here. And this cannot be inserted in anywhere before. So mm -hmm. 
the total order up to this point, if we don't revert the pivot chain, mm -hmm. it's uh, stable and uh, cannot be changed. So what happens when somebody publishes a block and the reference is pretty much going to something that's not uh, being broadcast in the network? Uh, you mean like some this block not... may reference to someone, but uh, yeah. this this one is not broadcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, this block this block will not be considered a valid block unless uh, other the see this block. So you only can accept this block and uh, you, you can only add it into the deck uh, yeah. after you add this one. Okay. Because it, otherwise you cannot know if there even is such a block exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. So otherwise uh, uh, either this one have to broadcast uh, this block first mm -hmm. and then this one, or others will just uh, ignore this one. Until they see this one, the the uh the other one can be who reference the letter can be accepted. Okay. Alright. And uh let's see. So I mean the usual problem with DAGs is like you can pretty much attack them by doing some kind of long range type of stuff. Because so like how how hard I mean like the each block right now has pretty much exactly the same proof of work as as this one's right. Uh, or or you for you this moment it? we can think they have the same difficulty. Okay. Difficult. Because there will be adjusting on difficulty in the border, you may reference a block with a lower difficulty, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not a very common case. I see. And uh, so, the way your transactions are pretty much circulating, right? Like, right. do do you modify how you circulate your transactions to kind of optimize for the structure? Because, uh, as you said, I mean, presumably, like in Bitcoin, Ethereum, mempools of all the miners are somewhat similar. Yeah, yeah. In this one, we will also have the similar uh mempool of transaction. Okay. But then we also select the transactions according to some uh, randomized rule. Mm -hmm. Because if they select uh, the same transaction, let's say because B, C, D, they may be generated uh, concurrently. Yeah. If they only select the transaction with the highest transaction fee, mm -hmm. then they will have the same transaction here, same here, same yeah. here, and the throughput uh, the three mm -hmm. block equals to one block. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this rule, uh, for this problem, uh, we will distribute the transaction fee to those who pack the transaction into the uh, block. So the person so, who produces this will receive transaction fees from this uh, block? Let's say we have a transaction, let's say T1. Yeah. If T1, is uh, packed in these two blocks. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, not a very good example. Let's, because uh, C already says V. Let's say T1 is packed in B and D. Yeah. These are two concurrent blocks. And, uh, okay, in this case, uh, the transaction fee of T1 will be divided uh, between the minor of B and D. Mm -hmm. If there are more concurrent blocks, uh, it Containing T1, it will be divided into more minors. Because C should not contain T1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's it. Right. Was that the invalid block if he contains it? Right. Uh, he will not get a uh, chunk of fee because he sees the. Yeah, he sees already a block. He already has seen that. Okay, in that case, uh, if a transaction has a very high transaction fee, mm -hmm. the miners uh, are free to assign a higher probability to pack that transaction. But uh, he must be aware that uh, it's like the other miners uh, will get uh, will have the same transaction as well. So let's say if this transaction fee is uh, ten, and mm -hmm. there is another transaction with the transaction fee six, and they can only pack one transaction in the block. Yeah. So 
it may not be the best choice to always choose 10, mm -hmm. because otherwise they get a 5 and a 5 each. So with some probability, they will choose the other transaction and get a higher revenue. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, the miners will use the randomized strategy and uh, uh, <coughs> in this way, they will use the randomized strategy to increase his unexpected revenue. And at the same time, they are uh, also maximizing the throughput of the whole system mm -hmm. uh, in transaction speed-wise. So you kind of, I mean, like to, to be efficient, right? Ideally, you would want to know how many of the blocks are going to be produced in parallel, right? Uh, in practice, uh, in practice, uh, when we have uh, uh, what's the block size? I think we have uh, two megabytes of block size. Mm -hmm. The broadcasting time to in, in our test the net, uh, but not a real net yeah. because we don't have it yet. The broadcasting time is like uh, one hundred seconds or one hundred twenty seconds to broadcast. Seconds or milliseconds. A second, the broadcasting to the whole network. Okay. I mean, I broadcast uh, two megabytes to like uh, twenty thousand uh, nodes with uh, yeah. with network uh, delay and so on. Mm -hmm. So during that time, we have a, because we have a block time of five seconds. So during the broadcasting, it's expected to generate uh, twenty blocks uh, or twenty four something like that. But uh, of course, some nodes will already see the block uh, mm -hmm. before it generates. So it, the concurrent block will be bounded uh, if we, there is no problem, uh, no adversary, no attack, no failure of the network. Mm -hmm. In the normal time, it will be bounded by something like 20. Okay. Yeah. Um, interesting. And then. So if you, if I'm producing this block, right? Yeah. What is the incentive for me to include this, to link to these two blocks, right? Why don't I just do this? Right, good point. I uh, can include T1 right here, which is like, yeah, 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 good yeah, transaction. So, <clears throat> so in the incentive design, we will punish the blocks uh, based on the anticon side of the block. Which anticon means that how many blocks are there? Well, we don't have, a, there is no reference order between these two blocks. Let's say for this block, mm -hmm. uh, um, this one sees him, this one doesn't see him, so this is one anti-block. If he doesn't reference this one, it's an anti block. This one can be an anti block. This one can be. Uh, this one is not because he referenced the uh, other one. So the anti block will not see the other one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So for this box, uh, we don't have a directed path uh, from C to D or from D to C. Yeah. So these are anti box, which is the uh, um, but generated during the broadcasting of C and D, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the anti of a block uh, is uh, much larger than the expected value, then we know there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. Either this one is withholding his block or his network is not uh, in a very good condition. So in this case, we will punish him in the block reward. Wait, if... So you're, you mean like somewhere later, pretty much, when everybody receives this block? Because like, if this is five seconds, right? But you said it takes like 120 seconds to, uh, to for well, everybody to receive everything? Not like uh, five seconds here, but okay. Well, you said block production time is... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'll be producing blocks every five seconds, pretty much. But let's imagine this is like one minor. For whatever reason, I okay, okay. This, uh, but the one miner will not have a five second block time. It will have ten or twenty uh, even more. The five second is the target of the whole network. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, but then, anyhow, there will be, there will naturally be many blocks, uh, yeah, which yeah. they don't have reference to the relations. But if we, there are too many blocks uh, mm -hmm. not referencing him or he doesn't reference the other, there is a problem, right? Yeah. So in this case, if the anticon is quite large, let's say there is one, two, three, mm -hmm. or even more, let's say 30 or 40, then we will punish this block in the block reward path. But, like, I mean, you like the, what may happen, let, let's say this is produced by a guy number one, the guy number two will see that these blocks are not referenced and link to them. Right, right, right. Sorry, it will reference them. Yeah, because by referencing other blocks, they will reduce his anti concept. Yeah, but th this person just stole the transactions from these two guys. Like yes, so for other day, it's just like uh, they generate the blocks uh, concurrently. Well, uh, let's imagine, so what happened is this this produced blocks, Yeah. and then he collected, he saw them, collected their transactions, did not link to them, right. this block, and for some reason he's like closer to this. Right. right. So he didn't propagate them, and uh, the second second person got his block first and right. to it. Right. This is perfect, but okay. Because it's an index guy block. You cannot say which one copy which. Yes, yeah. But my point is, like, at this point, I'm not punished, and I'm not incentivized to link them, right? I'm actually incentivized not to link them, uh, because I can take their transactions. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you don't reference to this block, yeah, uh, the anti count will be increased by at least one, right? Sure. And uh, for this one, increased by one. Then you may get some advantage in transaction fee mm -hmm. because you can steal the transaction with yeah. the high transaction fee here. But still, you will be punished in the block reward part. And also the transaction fee, you don't store you cannot steal the whole transaction fee. Right? You just uh, divide it with others. No, no, but they are after me, right? They are will be included, like because they will be referenced after. If, uh, I, if no. I was on, on the pivot pivot yeah, chain, yeah, uh, this one is on the pivot chain. Yeah, so they will... the happen the in another app in, in a later example, epoch, yeah. but still we will uh, get the transaction fee to. Uh, okay. Because we are not distributing the transaction only in one epoch. We will do it in several consecutive epochs. Uh, and why uh, they don't have a directed, uh, and they don't have reference uh, relation. I so see. if you do that, either we will still get the transaction fee, even if they are in a later epoch. But they may get a little less. Mm -hmm. So by doing so, uh, we haven't fixed the parameters yet, but uh, we want to make the parameters uh, to be tuned that uh, by increasing the anticon, you will get uh, more punishment than the than you getting the, than, you, yeah. than you can get from the transaction fee. So just for me to understand the, how, how the curve for punishing actually looks like, right? So. Like, I mean, there's pretty much like, I produced a block, right? And there's 20 other blocks pretty much produced at the same time. Yeah. Right. So what what is, like, you're pretty much saying that, you know, my, my if I don't link to any of them, even though I saw them. Yeah. Uh, I will get, uh, all right, so I guess, I guess the question, Actually, let me let me let me backtrack a little bit. Okay. The question I have is then um, if you if I I be able to link to these blocks, right? Right. So I, I have received them. The why am I not choosing one of them as a parent right now? Like why why didn't do this? Okay. Yeah, good question. So this is because. Bad choice, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in this case, uh, if he should uh, make this one or this one as his parent. Okay. 
the 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 yeah, it will be right. So it's right. pretty much alternative blocks that don't link to each other. Right, right, exactly. And then I produce a block pointing, and this is yes, my, yes. this is the uncles of my parent. This yes. is my uncles. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So and then so for in this case, who is getting punished by by not linking to them? Uh, he. He will, uh, this block will get punished by not linking to them. Because I didn't link to his uncles, he will get punished? No, 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 because he is not uh, linking to his family, right? Of course, he cannot. But he cannot, right? He cannot. Right. Still, he will, will be punished. Why? Because uh, uh, you don't know if uh, it's, uh, they are there, but... Like, Generated a concurrent way. Yeah. Oh, I generated a block later, but uh, I say my parent is uh, the same parent I here. Yeah. So in this case, uh, the antica will always be punished. We don't care the structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we will take a uh, punishment like uh, the factor is one minus the uh, gamma square over ten thousand. Gamma is the number of anti-count uh, anti blocks. Mm -hmm. So in expectation, the anti-count blocks will be bounded by something around the 20 mm -hmm. in the broadcasting. So that's just siblings, right? Yeah. That's not... Not, not necessarily siblings. They can, you like can have more blocks. Uh, across, across other blocks as well? Yeah, yeah. So you can have a lot of... Yeah, but we only count the anticon to the epoch of this block uh, of like uh, 20 epochs after this block. Because after we count the reward of this block, mm -hmm. there can still be some anticon blocks of this one. Yes. Because I can always generate a block uh, referencing to very early block and uh, you I did to the main pivot chain much later. Mm -hmm. So this one will not be counted as a punishment. But only for everything that's within 20 epochs? Yeah, uh, yeah, within 20. So in theory, if you're saying there's 20 siblings on average, yeah. so one, one of them is pivot chain and then there's 19 multiplied by 20 epochs. Uh, third, why 19 times 20? Well, so you have 19. Like in parallel, there is on yeah. average will be twenty blocks produced. Yeah, but uh, if the block is generated after this one is broadcasted, so even if they are sibling, they will reference this block, right? And uh, also reference uh, all the steps, all the anchor block supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case. Uh, he will not get punished for these uh, sampling blocks. I see, okay. So it's not, he'll only be punished if if what's happening is uh, like e everybody just doing this. Like everybody just sticking, yeah, yeah, sticking you, with you, their you, own chains and not... Right, right. And I mean, presumably... Not referencing to other chains. Yeah, so it's like a... But it's still, like, they will also get punished. Because by doing so, they will lose one. The relation of anti anti block uh, is uh, uh, reflecting. Mm -hmm. They are the anti to each other, right? Yeah. Okay. So in expectation, in normal time, this uh, um, punish will be no more than four percent. Mm -hmm. But if you increase this by one or by a few more, it will increase very quickly. Also, by the way, uh, we can't, we don't, the gamma is not exactly the number of anti blocks. It's the uh, equivalent number of anti blocks because uh, the anti will ha may contain some blocks with a much lower target uh, difficulty. 
Make and okay, yeah. Let's 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 talk about difficulty maybe a little bit. So yeah, how, yeah, how, yeah, how okay. does difficulty work? Okay, the difficulty that just did like uh, uh, say a thousand epoch, we will count the time step and uh, how many blocks are generated during this period, mm -hmm. and then adjust the target difficulty. But still, uh, after we adjust the target difficulty, it's possible some oil, some block generated earlier will be added to the deck after we have the new difficulty. Yeah. Oh. But those blocks, uh, uh, they will have lower difficulty. So when we count the punishment, those blocks will have lower weight as well. I see, okay. This is to avoid attack uh, by uh, linking to a yeah, yeah, you create a very yeah, 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 very low difficulty block. You generate a large anti here, yeah. and everybody gets punished. Mm -hmm. So this way, you will not do that. You cannot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so difficulty wise, let me think for a second. If you have a. Uh, so you, you said there is a timestamp. Yeah, that would be. Uh, so there's timestamp for on every block. Right. Yeah. How is this timestamp like proven, validated, accepted? Like why why can't I just say, oh actually, you know, ten minutes passed, we should reduce the difficulty. Uh well. Because, um, because this time step is uh, generated by different miners, so they can be very different uh, clock, right? Yeah, but like, let's say I'm a miner, yeah, yeah. and I produced, you know, some percentage of blocks. Yeah. Why would I not, like, try to increase this time step beyond the real time? Um, mm, well... <laughs> Okay, that's a good question. Because like if I would do this, and you know my body would do this, and then... Like, yeah, if you I... increase the time step uh, too much, then the block will not be accepted. Uh, because the time step is uh, too different from the real world uh, clock or the local time of other miners. So, yeah. So the the my the other node when they accept the block, they check this timestamp and like what what's the window that allows this timestamp to vary? Uh, well, I, I I don't quite know this parameter. Yeah, yeah but like implementation, it's like uh, a few hours maybe, mm -hmm. a few hours or maybe a few days. But like, let's say we are miners, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, just two, well, I mean, there's a bunch of other miners, but two of us, you know, colluding okay. on time. Okay. And uh, so we start producing blocks, which are like with the skewed timestamps. And I mean, we yeah. still, we still link to the, to the main, to the main, to the pivot chain. Yes. But uh, like we keep pushing it, right? So like, would we in this way, reduce the difficulty because like the block time because the average, block time seems uh, yeah, long much long. better than the real yeah. world time mm. in fact if other miners are honest they will not accept uh, this block uh, mm -hmm. before the time window becomes uh, small enough then this uh, if the time step is too much ahead of the local clock time. But, uh, all right, so let, let's draw this a little bit. So there's a lot of that happening here. Right. Um, That's the piece that I'm talking about. You cannot join the evil. All right, so let's say, I mean, this is like a real, real, real DAG been built, right? Yeah. Uh, And uh, what we do, we just produce blocks, 
yeah. with a increased timestamp, so like oh yeah, it took forever. Yeah. And we just keep producing them. Yeah. And we just keep pointing at the parent a while ago. I would just say there's a right. Right. So I mean if this guy if this guys are honest, right, they'll link to us. Yes. Like the pure pivot chain. Yeah, like the that's a pivot chain. Yeah, it's a pivot chain. Like it will link to us. So when the, when, the, when there's time to recalculate the difficulty. Yeah. Like our our thing will be included into this. Right. Um, but when this is included here, yeah. the time step will not be too different, right? Yeah, but this block took, like we just said, like, I mean, so this is, this is let's say, this is style map box, right? So, right, right. So this is the beginning of the epoch. Yeah. And actually what we did, we, we were producing these blocks, you know, with whatever period we can produce blocks. Yeah. But they said they all took, Thousand epochs, you said five seconds each epoch? Ten seconds? Uh, oh, sorry. I think uh, I mean a thousand blocks. Whatever. I mean, let, let's, let's say, let's just like, let's say like two hours or whatever, yeah. right? So I just put that this took two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, right? So yeah. within this thousand epochs, let's imagine I could produce like so you mean this is twelve? I mean the like the, from this one? Yeah, like I, 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 I say this is zero. Yeah, this, this is one. zero. This is my my the the block I produced. This is all the blocks I produced. Yeah. But I put they all took two hours. And by the time they were they, uh, I guess I and I just published them all at the at the end, right? So yeah. this guy, being honest, he needs to like include all of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll include all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we just got like, I mean, some fraction, right? That took forever, right? Which, if you can calculate difficulty from all of the blocks, right? Like uh, you know, they're just calculating from pivot chain. No, no, no. I will calculate uh, all the blocks. In yeah, that. all the blocks. So, so this blocks, you know, took forever, and uh, this this lowered the difficulty. Why? I I don't get this point. Because here we have a time step, right? But in fact, we will compute the time step. Uh, so, so this time step, uh, so this is was zero, this would, would be 1000, right? Yeah, 1000. And all of this also are 1000, pretty much. Yeah. So let's say I could manage to produce 500 blocks. Okay. But then I will come to to this point, one thousand. In the past top in the view that uh, the in the past top with this uh, pivot block, yeah. there are these many blocks. Yeah, so so, so I mean let, let's assume this like the thing you said, there's twenty blocks per per epoch being produced. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then it's thousand epochs, right? Yeah. So I managed to produce like five hundred. Yeah. Uh, so it's a five hundred out of twenty thousand. Like it's yeah. a it's a fair bit of percentage, right? Right. So like this will lower a little bit difficulty. Because like let's say every everybody else was producing like on the clock, like they were all on point. Yeah. So this and you have what what is this? This is like uh, um like you mean couple couple percent. Like less, right? Um, uh, by making the time a, a little ahead, so you let the consensus rules think the epoch takes a, a little longer time. Yeah, on, on, yeah, on average, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I did it once, that lowered a little bit difficulty, right? Then I do it again and again and again. But if, if you do it once, then the next epoch uh, begins at some uh, time ahead of time. You know, you mean like people, like the normal people will be producing faster, right? 
now because the ficus is smaller. Because, um, because you cannot uh, let the time shift uh, unlimited on the 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 bound you cannot shift it too much. So if we, you shift it uh, longer to mm -hmm. this epoch seems to take longer time, then the next epoch uh, in the consensus looks uh, to that uh, later. And when we adjust the difficulty for the next epoch, it looks uh, that one will be a shorter time period. I mean, it's not, it's not that uh, epoch, like epoch took exactly the same time. It's just that on average blocks took longer. Um, so I don't get it. So, so when, when you say, okay, when you're saying you're computing difficulty from the timestamp, are you computing just this, 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 mm -hmm. or are you computing average how long it took the blocks to, to produce? Oh, I will compute uh, the starting time of the epoch, yeah. which is the average of many blocks, uh, average of time steps uh, from many blocks, not only one. I see, okay. And uh, the and they... ending time of the epoch, and uh, the, the number of blocks in, in between. Uh -huh. And the number of blocks in between? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how does that get used? Because I have the a starting time of this yeah. uh, period and the uh, ending time of this period. And uh, in expectation, I will have uh, uh, how many blocks I can calculate, right? So I've taken the four blocks. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can see how many blocks I have here. Produced, okay. Yeah, I have I produced see. that. And uh, not only the pure chain, every block is counted. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I will do a calculation, uh, just divide them and uh, see if the what the target should be. Okay, I see. So, so, so by shifting the time step here, you can, maybe you can influence the ending time of this uh, yeah. a little bit, but not too much. And then it will also affect the starting time of the next uh, difficulty at the same time. Yeah, so you pretty much this timestamp is actually the timestamp right, of, the, of right. the blocks beforehand. Yes, yes. Yeah, so if we push them, this yeah, time can Because shift. the total time is uh, cannot, be, uh, cannot be shifted too much. All right, yeah. So, do you do anything for like transaction propagation or like? Even the block propagation, right? You actually have like a lot of duplication of blocks. Do you do any like blue filter or like inverse blue filter? Uh, yeah, I think so. And also compact block. Compact block? Yeah, yeah, we will use that because the uh, many transactions will be similar. Yeah. Similar, yeah. And also, it, it really makes the broadcasting much faster mm -hmm. than just uh, broadcasting the whole block. Yeah. All right. Uh, what what is that? Or actually, one question we didn't discuss is uh, block reward. So it's block block not the transaction fees. Do you have also like a general block reward? Yeah, yeah. there will be a general coin based reward. Yeah. Is it this, is it uh, also split between everybody in the epoch? Epoch. Uh, no, that is not uh, split between other. It's a pro uh, block. Uh, Reward, mm -hmm. but we have some factor like uh, anti crime punishment and mm -hmm. uh, oh, think. Oh, yeah, also difficulty punishment. So if you have a block, uh, maybe added here, mm -hmm. but it's printed very early, so if the target difficulty mm -hmm. can be very small. Yeah, yeah. In this case, we will not get uh, the same block award as others, mm -hmm. although they are in the same epoch. But but it's still split between everybody in the epoch, right? Oh no no, block award is uh, given per block, not depending on how many blocks in one epoch. So if there oh. are ten, if there are ten blocks in one epoch, each of them will get one block award. I see. Because uh, the block generation takes uh, the same amount of 
uh, proof of work. Right? Mm -hmm. If you have 20 or 10, this may just be because of the network condition or some uh, random thing. So in this case, every block, they did the same amount of work, mm -hmm. so they get the same, roughly the same amount of block of work. I mean, yeah, adjusted for like difficulty. Yeah, yeah to, if the difficulty is much longer, yeah, you will not get the award. I see. All right. Um, what what is the other interesting parts of the system that we didn't talk about? Mm -hmm. Wait, let me see. Oh, there is a one part of. Because uh, for the deferred execution, because we are using an account model and uh, supporting smart contracts, mm -hmm. so that's uh, basically an optimization in the implementation. Mm -hmm. It's not in the consensus rule. Because when you use that, it's unlikely you have very long uh, reversion. Because uh, that means you revert the ghost chain mm -hmm. for one month. But uh, it's likely that you change the pivot chain. It's likely you change it between this one mm -hmm. because they are very new in the pivot chain. So mm -hmm. the problem, uh, when you see these two blocks, you don't know which one will become the later pivot block. Mm -hmm. So if you do the execution at this time, and uh, you see the revert by one block, you will have to go back and uh, list all the state here and then they do the computation. Yeah. So that's very expensive. inefficient, uh, yeah. expensive. So in fact, uh, <coughs> and this block, we will have a state, right? State root. But this state root is not uh, the state uh, after we process all the transactions here, it refers to five parent, uh, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, okay? <coughs> so this is state means uh, after we execute uh, all the transactions before this block, mm -hmm. including this one, and uh, now we get a state, and the state root is updated here. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you, you actually cannot even put state, because this block may be put somewhere, like the order may be different when it actually uh, finalizes. Yeah, sorry. So when you're producing the block, you yeah. cannot actually produce a state root. Uh, you mean the state root? The state root of these transactions, yet. Of this? Of yeah. this transaction? Yeah, uh, because this, this block may get included somewhere here. Oh, but in fact you can, because if it's included somewhere here, it is still... No, oh, but, oh, but, I know but, your but, point. But, but there is, yeah, there is something I see, here, I see. Right? Yeah, because if it's not a pure block, some blocks, yeah. some anti comp block of this one will yeah, be, yeah, exactly, be inserted yeah. before. Yeah, that's true. So the state root will actually use the among the pivot, uh, sorry, among the parent, uh, among the parent reference of this block, mm -hmm. and we count the file parent here, and the state root is uh, after executing this one. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, if we revert, uh, let's say, from here to here, yeah. or even from here, we revert to somewhere here, let's say, we re revert to this one, this branch, they will have the st same state root. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need yeah, yeah, one more know. parent. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Hash so in this case, uh, uh, it's uh, very likely we don't need to recompute the state too, too often, right? Because in practice, uh, in our experiment, uh, we will, we see many uh, reverting of uh, length one or two, but it's very unlikely to have a revert of uh, length three, and uh, above four or five, we don't see any. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this is without any like adversarial behavior. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, probably some ways to kind of. Yeah, but if they are in that diversity, <laughs> the efficiency will be of course that true. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the adversity power. So if I'm if I'm a if I'm a pretty much like light client, right? What is 
Like, what can I actually use to verify the, the current state of the chain? Uh, the current of the data, you mean? Like, I'm, I'm a light client, right? I cannot maintain the whole... The whole data. Like, all, of the all of the transactions and everything, right? I cannot compute it. I just want to have a, like, some... Like, I, I'm pretty much requesting, you know, I'm on the phone, and I'm requesting you, hey, give me state, give me state of my account. Yeah. Like, you know, zero X, whatever. Like how much, uh, how much I have. What, what is, uh, you can provide to me that? Uh, so I cannot provide to you the latest, that's the date after executing the latest block. Yeah. But you will not accept it either because that's not confirmed. Mm -hmm. It's not finalized. Yeah. So what I will provide is if you ask uh, uh, what is my latest uh, finalized state. Yeah. I can find the uh, on the tree and actually it will go a bit further than five blocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that state root, I will find the state uh, of the account and with the uh, Merkle proof. And I can prove to you that's the state. But how how can how can I check that this state root is correct? That it's on the DAG? Uh, if you can read the block header, it's uh, easy, right? If it, I need to pretty much recreate the whole DAG, right? Like without bodies, but full DAG of headers. Yeah, also. Uh, not really by full deck, but uh, from some checkpoint later, you need to get uh, the structure of the deck, right? And how does checkpoints work? Okay, let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, uh, Suppose we have this block and uh, that's a path set of this block. Yeah. And we have other blocks uh, that this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if this set is large enough, we know that uh, if mm -hmm. any block uh, that uh, ever have a parent in the path of this one, and uh, that uh, included the yeah. Sorry, yeah, this one we mm -hmm. like referenced, yeah. Get the reference the at this point. Then this block will get uh, enough many punishment. It will get nothing. Mm -hmm. Will not uh, change the reward, and also it will not be used to punish this box for their reward mm -hmm. because it is too late. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, we know uh, every block uh, up to this point, uh, the reward, the state will be stable. Mm -hmm. Unless you revert a very long chain. Okay, so in this case, we can let's say, take uh, all the previous ones and uh, get a snapshot. And we can start the state here. And then this will be updated uh, to later box to the last checkpoint. So every time when you want to check the structure of the deck, mm -hmm. you don't need to get the structure of the whole deck here. Mm -hmm. You need to start from uh, one <coughs> checkpoint. And then you get the box after the checkpoint. Okay, so but so the checkpoint is just a like it's a it's a hash of a block, right? Of this block. And uh, like what was a checkpoint data structure? 
Mm. Because you actually need to validate that this is really a checkpoint. Right. This if a checkpoint uh, let me think. The structure of a checkpoint is basically the state root uh, what we will have uh, here plus uh, the Mm. Okay. The state root plus the block header of the deck before it. The full deck? The full? Uh, up to the late, the last checkpoint. Okay, so, so it will have all of the headers of all, all, of all the blocks? Uh, yeah, you, you may need a, a mock root here, right? For the depth structure. Because in most of the cases, you don't really need to get the depth structure. I mean, my question is pretty much how hard it is for me to create a checkpoint that's like, I created a different block. Here, right? Right. Which nobody points it. I mean, and can I can say this is a checkpoint? Like, what what is preventing me from doing that? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I'm sending to like client, I'm like, hey, you know, here's a state. Yeah. Okay. So. Because you haven't implemented this part yet. <laughs> okay, so okay. I need to think it uh, about yeah. Okay, so basically the state root of the checkpoint, uh, which includes the state and uh, the depth structure before it, mm -hmm. will be added uh, in the later block, which mm -hmm. thinks uh, this one is the pivot block at this point. Okay. If you do this block, others will not think uh, he is the pivot block. Right. Okay. And then just take it as a reference block. Mm -hmm. So what he thinks is a checkpoint that doesn't matter. No, no, but, but I mean, let's say I am producing this block, which says this is a checkpoint. But then you have to add your parent as this one, right? So I cannot reference to it? You can reference to it, but the reference block uh, doesn't I? have the power of producing a checkpoint. Okay, so but when then you're saying you, you're sending to me only a checkpoint, right? For, yeah. For, for the light flag. So I don't actually know if you parented to it or referenced it or whatever. Uh, I need to send you the checkpoint and the, the box um, later, the structure after the checkpoint. Okay. So you can check. Uh, Check that this, this, this is, is actually yeah, this, this is a pivot block pretty much. Yeah, that's a pivot block. I see. So tell me pretty much this block header is the checkpoint. And then you send it to me everything that happened after it. So pretty yeah. much about 20, 20 plus epochs. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll uh, like would be more than 20. Yeah, I mean, more than like, at least 10. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Then I can verify that... Yeah, and also you can ask other nodes if they have the same checkpoint uh, and the real. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, in case there are any difference, uh, you need I mean, problem. they can give you this, for example, which will be kind of like... Uh, uh, no, no, not a job. You can check find we will do it uh, periodically. Oh. After a fixed number of height or epoch. I see. Okay. Uh, uh, after a fixed number of epoch. I see, okay, okay, okay. So you cannot... We, we don't have a rolling checkpoint. Rolling checkpoint, no? No, okay. no, not yeah. So the checkpoint will be relatively stable, and uh, on this node, we'll 
Like the share the same checkpoint. Yeah, I okay. mean, thanks a lot. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them on the video. Otherwise, check out the white paper and uh, join the Confluxing community. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.